Okay, today I'm gonna show you how to make pho. So here are the beef bones. This is a beef knuckle bones that I bought from the market and I just rinsed and wash it with salt to get rid of all the yucky stuff. Okay, so while your beef bone is getting me already washed, you have a pot of hot boiling water. This is to use to blanch the bones. So what you do is you wait until it boils and then you just drop the bone into the pot like that. And you can add it all the way till it's full. So about, well this pot will hold about six or seven pieces of bones. And this is actually all beef knuckle bones. So they're kind of big. And let it cook for about four minutes. And then it just kind of, the color will changes as it cooks. And when it changes the color and no more bleeding from the bone, then you can just take it out. So I'll just let that cook for about a couple minutes. Well, maybe four or five. Okay, so this has been about four minutes. So now I'm just gonna take it out and it just looks like that. See, the color has changed and no more dripping of the blood. And you just put it in another container, take all of it out. Once you take it out from that pot, you just put it in the sink. I'm making a big pot, so it's a lot of bones. And what you do now is you just rinse it with warm water. Get rid of all that yucky stuff that you haven't gotten rid of when it was blanching. And then you just put it in a clean container. So here I have a big pot of hot boiling water ready for the beef bones. has been blanched and washed, all clean, ready to go in. So I got this pot started once I started washing the bones and blanching the bones. So that, that way by the time you finish with the bones, the water is ready for the bones to go in. And this is what will be your broth for the pho later so the water is boiling you want to use a tongue and just gently toss the bone one by one into the pot slowly just like that okay. so all the bones are in the pot also that big piece of meat in there is a piece of brisket you also want to cook that too at the same time as you're cooking the bones so while the beef bone is being cooked in that big pot you want to go ahead and get some of your ingredients that go in the pot are the ginger, the white onion, and the purple onion. And what I did to the ginger and the white onion is I microwaved it for two minutes each separately. And after I microwaved it, I took it out and let it cool and smash my ginger. That way it helps to intensify the aroma. See, you can still see the steam coming out of the white onions from microwaving it. Some people roast it in the oven, but I'm a time saver, especially nowadays in this busy time. I just microwave it two minutes each, and then you just cut it in fourth. Not all the way down, just halfway down. That way it can open up some of the aroma from the onion. And then what you do is you just drop it into the pot. You just drop it gently like that. And there it goes. Go ahead and put all of it in. And then the purple onion. And just let it cook. Once it boils, you want to turn down to the medium heat and go ahead and start scooping all the foam that comes up in the surface. That kind of release all of the color so your broth won't be as dark. And clean out all the, bro the broth so my foam is boiling right now. So what you wanna do is you see all this foam up here. You might wanna use this strainer right here and just scoop it out. Gently scoop it out and dump it into a pot.
so this foam keep coming up for about an hour or two so you just have to keep an eye on it and scoop it as it come to the surface this is one way of cleaning out your broth so your broth will be clear later instead of dark you don't want for a broth to look dark Okay, so the bone has been cooking for about an hour now. I can go ahead and put some salt to flavor the broth and the meat. And just let it keep cooking. I like to cook my bones at least about five hours. And how you can tell also is the meat will be really tender on the bones. And that's how you can check. And just let it boil. So the bone has been cooked for about four hours. As you can tell that the water has kind of decreased. And now... You can go ahead and take all the bones out. See, the meat is falling off the bones. And this is perfect timing for you to go ahead and remove all the bones. So that's what I'm doing right now. So this is what it looks like after I took all the bones out. And you can go ahead and fill the water up all the way to those knobs right there. So this is after I fill the water up. See, it's all full again. And while you wait for this to come back to a, a boiling point, you can go ahead and get your um, ingredients, the last part ready. So what I have here is a package of the seasoning. This is what it looks like. You can buy this at any supermarket. Also, I have this package as well. And again, you can find it at any Asian market. Now, what I'll do is I will get a pan like this. And I will go ahead and roast this seasoning packet. And just put it in the pan. All of it. And it comes with a bag, so you can put all of the seasoning back in here and then drop in the pot in a minute. So here is the seasoning package that I am roasting on a pan, just uh, on kind of low, medium heat. That way you don't burn it because it burns really quick. So you roast this for about two to three minutes and you can smell it. Um, that's another way of telling if it's ready or not. Just throw them around. Okay, so now it's done. Turn off the heat. And now you just get a scoop, any scoop. You can go ahead and scoop that in a bag. And scoop it all. All of it. So the whole bag of ingredients is ready. You go ahead and tie it. You want to tie it really well so the seed doesn't float into the pot of broth because that would be a disaster. So you want to tie it really well, however many times you want to, but you also want to leave the string long enough so you can tie this on the handle so it doesn't go and sink at the bottom of the pot. So you go ahead and drop it in here gently and just tie this string around the handle so I can keep afloat. There we go. And now I have this package. I'll go ahead and open that up. And it usually comes with four bags. And now just go ahead and top that in there too. See, you can still see that there's foaming again. And you can always use the strainer again and scoop all of it out. At this moment, you want to go ahead and turn down your heat really low. And just let it cook. 
and let it simmer for about an hour. Maximum of an hour and a half because you don't want the broth to be overpowering from the seasoning. And just let that simmer for an hour and a half. So the bags has been in it in the pot for an hour now. So I'll go ahead and remove this. And you can actually just leave this bag in here for until you're ready to eat and take it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and season the pho. Okay, so now it's time to season the pho and I use the mushroom seasoning powder and the sea salt only uh, to flavor my pho. And with this big pot, I use three cups of this seasoning, mushroom seasoning powder and a little cup of this salt. And that's all it goes in. And just taste it to see if you like it. And that's it. Enjoy your pho.